Howdy folks, welcome to the Agnostic Philosopher. I'm Don. I look at logic. Logic applies in all fields. It's the way in which we process information. And so whether we're looking at quantum mechanics, whether we're looking uh, revisiting Einstein's theory of relativity, whether we're looking at botany, whether we're looking at how to buy a car, whether we're looking at theology, logic is re reason, rationality, uh, and being rational, root word ratio, <laughs> basically has to do with what makes the most sense, this against that. And this makes more sense, that makes less sense. I'll do this. In any case, I saw this one recently. It was suggested to me by uh, the YouTube algorithm, and I said, I got to get on this one. Sabine Hassenfelder's The U Universe Seems to be Spinning. I'm guessing my James Webb Space Telescope hat had something to do with it, at least the telescope itself did, of discovering things that are out there I think there's a lot of stuff they're not telling us about, too, just because they might think it would scare the crap out of the public. But I've got no basis for it, and I don't freak out about stuff I can't control anyway. I honestly didn't see this coming. A new study has found that the universe might be spinning. What does that even mean? Let's have a look. Many galaxies, like our own Milky Way, have a spiral shape with arms winding around a central bulge. These spirals form because the galaxies rotate and the arms trail behind. Astronomers like to study these spiral galaxies because their distinct structure can tell us something about the overall formation of structures in the universe and about the influence of dark matter on those structures. At least that's what they say. I think they just study spiral galaxies because they're pretty. Be that as it may, the first galaxies in our universe are particularly interesting because for them we know how old they are. They can't have formed before the Big Bang. One of the missions of the James Webb Space Telescope was to look for those early galaxies that began to form a few hundred million years past the Big Bang. One of the surprises that the data from the Webb Telescope delivered is that galaxies grow and develop structures much faster than the dark matter hypothesis predicted. It was a prediction of modified Newtonian dynamics instead, as we just talked about a few weeks ago. But this new finding? No one predicted this. For the new study, researchers mm. zoomed in on 263 of these ancient galaxies to figure out which way they were spinning. They found something astonishing. About two-thirds of the galaxies are rotating in the opposite direction as our Milky Way. Those are marked in blue. And only a third mm. rotate in the same direction as the Milky Way. Those are marked in red. That's wild. It really shouldn't happen. Even Albert is shocked. You see, the reason that most galaxies spin is that they form from matter whose density increases because gravity pulls it together. And that matter isn't just sitting still, it's moving around. This makes it very unlikely. It has no angular momentum. And angular momentum is conserved. And so, much like for a figure skater, if the matter gets denser, its rotation speeds up. But since this process is entirely a result of the random motion of the initial matter, you expect galaxies to spin in each direction with the same probability. So what's going on here? Well, one possibility is that the result is just wrong. That, however, seems very unlikely to me. First of all, it's a pretty big anomaly. It's not even close to 50-50. But more importantly, this was actually already seen in earlier studies for older galaxies. It's just that for those, the asymmetry was much smaller, so no one took it really seriously. If one assembles all this data together, it looks like the asymmetry was larger in the early universe. So I guess there's a large enough sample size is what's being said, and I don't know so much of our perception is based on is relative to ourselves our size our our awareness our understanding and it's to and the duration of the acquisition of human knowledge is very short so we've got a very short or very small sampling of knowledge of what's going on out there. And so we might say that looking at two trillion galaxies or whatever the number is out there, 
uh, the unequal distribution of spin, that two-thirds are going in one direction, one-thirds going in the other, that when it should have been 50-50 based on dark matter theories and you know, Sir Fred Hoyle was a, a steady status, thinking that matter was basically evenly distributed throughout the universe. Um, is, in, that's based on a very small sample size, because a trillion galaxies may seem like a very large number to us, and it is, because we can't even conceptualize it. But we're prejudiced to think that our conception is enough our logic, our ability is enough to conceptualize it. And we're still going to try. We're still going to find the flaws in it as she is. Maybe the universe is spinning one way and that's causing uh, two thirds to go in one direction and the other third are going to get in line eventually or something. I don't know where she'll go with this, but we have a very small sample size based on the potential or actual age of the universe, but the potential age of the universe or universes, multiverses. There's also the possibility that this observation has something to do with us rather than with the galaxies. That is, maybe it's for some reason easier to observe galaxies that spin one way rather than the other. But there's no good explanation for that. And again, right. that other measurements with different instruments found similar things makes that somewhat implausible. If you've already forgotten half of what I said, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. What then what could hair? explain it? The most straightforward possibility is that the matter in the early universe had itself a spin on very large scales. The entire universe had a spin, basically, and that has affected the likelihood of smaller systems to spin one way or another, thereby taking up some of the overall spin. Another possibility. Ooh, maybe in a multiverse, and we had this question back at Rutgers 40 years ago when I was there with Tim Maudling in Philosophy of Science, but how do we know? And he had uh, two cylinders next to one another that we're not just living as though, and they're actually multiple cylinders next to one another, that we're not going from like one cylinder and then the other cylinders called stamped out worlds. They're very, very similar imperceptibly different from one another so that you go into the next one without knowing it. And so this was really an exercise in thinking, thought experiment, how do we know? Not actual science per se, but it, the stamped out worlds were represented as cylinders. And now I'm thinking, well, maybe in one cylinder, they all do spin the same way. Another cylinder they spin another way, much like galaxies spin in different directions, but maybe each multiverse spins one way and maybe two multiverses cross through one another and that's what we're observing. Not just a dual star system, but a dual universe system. Does that even make sense? Yeah, I think it does. Is that we misunderstood something about the plasma that formed in the early universe. Indeed, one of the theories which could give rise to such correlations is that of the fractal universe. The idea right. of the fractal universe is that the quantum fluctuations that gave rise to the motions of the plasma in the early universe had a self-similarity, a pattern that repeats from very large to very small scales. As an example, right. look at the Julia set, one of the best studied fractals. It's full of spirals and they all turn the same way. If the plasma in the universe had such a fractal pattern, that could also explain why we observe too many large supergalactic structures that violate the cosmological principle. I'll admit that this surprised me. This is why I like doing science news. You never know what's the next story that the universe will spin. All right, so yeah, I love these new theories, these new ideas. A lot of them will go nowhere, but some of them will on occasion. And of course, there's always going to be opposition to a new idea because that is the way in which things get proven. And if they stand the test of time, if they stand challenges and re the resistance, um, the resistance serves a purpose. But if it makes sense, eventually it'll find itself into broader acceptance because it's just harder to argue against something if we're describing something the way it is. But this stuff to us right now, it's, it's more than fun. It's, it's pretty intense because it challenges 
ideas in physics, galaxies are traveling f away from us faster than the speed of light. That shouldn't be happening according to the, uh, Einstein's theory of relativity. And so now we have to figure that out. So what are we discovering out there that's very different than what we, in our small sample size of time, of understanding of the millions of scientists and philosophers and theologians and all the folks out there that are postulated about the way things work, it's still a remarkably small sample size based on what is out there, the duration of what we call time and the fractalization. Well, if we are, if our 14 and a half billion years is just a fractal of a larger thing, which is just a portion, a fractal of a larger thing, then what we're seeing now in terms of two-thirds of universes uh, or galaxies are spinning one way, a third are spinning the other way, it still is not a large enough sample size, even though the disparity of 66.7% going one way if it's perfectly two-thirds and 33.3% going the other way. It seems like a big disparity based on a theorized 50-50 shot. It, in a small sample size, you will have disparities. And over time and more trials, it, it'll even out. That's the theory of swamping in philosophy, that if you start out with a run of 10 heads over time, it's going to even up and uh, become 50-50 instead of 100 to 0 percent, just because of the small sample size idea. Um, and I'm sure that theory of swamping has been challenged, but it's, it's kind of tough to challenge. It's something that's just mathematical. And uh, it tends to show up in nature. So, all right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Please share, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you on another video. And keep thinking philosophically.